Cheers guys, Epix911. Welcome to my top 10 virtual reality experiences slash games. There's no rules to this. These aren't gonna be in any specific order. Sure, I'm gonna start with one and go through nine others for a total of 10, but they're not gonna be in any specific order. In other words, the first one we talk about isn't gonna be my least favorite, nor necessarily my favorite. The reason for that is it's spread across three different platforms. Uh, sometimes it's available for a couple of platforms. What I will do though, is let's say it was a title that came out for the Vive and the Rift. I'll let you know which I preferred it on and why. And what I'd love to hear guys is your top 10. Doesn't matter if you've only got one of the big three, maybe the Vive, the Rift or the PlayStation VR. I wanna hear your top 10. Games, applications, it doesn't matter nor does, like I said, the order matter. Just give me your top 10. Really curious what had an impact for you in 2017. And the beauty this time around is we've got a full year worth of titles, right? First time around 2016, the Vive and the Rift had a bit of a head start. They had about nine months. And of course, PlayStation VR coming in late in 2016 only really had one season, right? The Christmas season, three months roughly worth of titles. So with that said, guys, let's start with my top 10. Again, in no specific order. The first title, a title that had such an impact on me, it's literally desensitized me to a genre of movies. And I'm talking, of course, PlayStation VR's Resident Evil 7. This is one of those unique titles in that going into it, I really honestly and truly didn't think about playing it seated or room scale. I just loved the series and couldn't wait to get started. Now, as it happens, I played it seated, not room scale. I believe I've got a quick look video on it, but what I got was nothing short of freaking amazing. I tried about half a dozen other horror titles in VR. All of them were missing something I couldn't quite put my thumb on. I could come up with the negatives, for example, resorting to jump scares, right? You know, having things pop into your view. The cheap scares. Resident Evil 7, don't get me wrong, it's not without those. It has its fair share of jump scares. But it also has suspense build up and guys freaking sheer absolute unbounded terror to the point where yeah it's desensitized me from horror movies i can watch a horror movie now and whereas in days past yeah i might have a couple of rough nights of sleep i remember some movies like amityville for example when i was a kid i couldn't sleep for two freaking weeks well resident evil 7 had that effect on me. Jump scares and all, it had absolute moments of just brilliant, unbridled terror. It's also not a short game. You don't feel like you were taken advantage of, right? Buying a game and then getting 30 minutes to a couple of hours of gameplay out of it. No, you get a decent amount of gameplay out of this game. And the characters themselves, it's one of those demented families Wrong Turn is a perfect example of that. Those happen to be inbred cannibals. Well, they're pretty unique in this title as well. And they feel like a real demented family. So if you have PlayStation VR and you like horror, holy crap, the why you aren't playing this would be my first question. Definitely. If you can grab it on sale, hell, full price, get yourself Resident Evil 7 for PlayStation VR. And then the next title, guys, also on PlayStation VR, Skyrim VR. Now, you might be wondering, because I've talked about Skyrim before and Bethesda RPGs and how much I love modding. And I think that is pretty much the reason I picked Skyrim VR. Yes, I understand there are some mods people have been able to get working, not as much as, you know, say with Fallout 4, where there's quite a few mods that work. 
The reason I chose PlayStation VR is for that reason. The PC experience to me is defined through modding. I've beaten it without mods, but probably about a dozen times more with mods. It adds hundreds of hours of gameplay when you pad the game with new adventures, new graphics, textures, etc. Right? My favorite way to play. To remove myself from that, I chose the PlayStation version. I'm glad I did because it allowed me to enjoy the vanilla version of Skyrim in VR and reminded me of just how cool the unmodded version of the game actually was. So if you like RPGs, same thing as I said with Resident Evil 7, if you like horror games and haven't gotten around to playing it yet, definitely give it a try. And then next up guys, we have a title from alumni from the former Interplay Productions. And I'm talking about In Exile and their Mage's Tale for the Oculus Rift. That was the platform I played this title on. And what I love about Brian Fargo and his group, they can inject humor into a game, but not necessarily derail it. Even their reboot of Bard's Tale, which I personally wasn't a huge fan of, I think it was 2004 or 2005 when it came out, it had its moments. There was some genuine, awesome humor in the game. Well, The Mage's Tale is that universe, but through the eyes of a mage as opposed to a bard. And yeah, there's some over-the-top humor, but there's some downright just amazingly funny moments in the title. Highly recommend it. And in terms of making you feel like a spellcaster, and remember, this is given the VR devices and tools that we have, right? No crazy haptics, just Rift controllers, but the game genuinely feels like it delivers in terms of spellcasting. You feel every bit the spellcaster in the title. It's not super short. Also not super long, but at the end of it, you definitely feel like you got your money's worth. And then next up, another Rift title. This one, Lone Echo. What I love about Lone Echo can be summed up in pretty much two words. Zero gravity. I've been looking since virtual reality was a thing for the zero gravity application. An application that could convincingly deliver what zero G would feel like. There's other ones, Adrift is an example, and a couple of others that I can't remember at the moment. They've got instances of zero G, but they never quite felt right to me. Lone Echo, from the get-go, perfect. It feels like I would expect zero G to feel, without really being zero G. And I know that sounds a little strange, but they designed the game in such a way that it convincingly makes you feel like you are in a zero G environment without having to resort to all kinds of crazy tricks. Just design, pure, simple, nice design. Lone Echo, fantastic. Let's switch platforms, guys, on this next one. This is an HTC Vive preferred title, The Talos Principle. I did a quick look on this, and what I love about it, guys, is it's a puzzle game that delivers so much more than just puzzles. Being a history geek and a geography geek, and having mentioned that more times than you guys probably want to hear, it delivers on all those fronts. I love ancient Rome. I love ancient Greece, the classical period, doesn't matter what years. And from that point of view, the game delivers. But it also delivers in terms of presenting you with puzzles that never feel cheap. The game, even for the more challenging puzzles, it never feels unfair. Like the game is cheating, right? Uh, one of my pet peeves, for example, with Civilization is Cranking the difficulty doesn't necessarily make the eye play better, it just makes it cheat more. Not the case with this title. I felt it was fair and savvy 
AI that was beating me every time it beat me. You're also going to get an amazing variety of puzzles. You've got different objects in the game that allow you to approach puzzles in different ways. Sure, there's some lateral thinking, right? Some really obvious stuff that after a deep puzzle, the developers have thrown in to kind of throw you off the scent. But there's also some downright nasty, involved brain stumpers. All in all, a fantastic title, The Talos Principle. Graphics as well, amazing. Next up, also for the Vive, Google Earth VR. This is the only non-game VR experience in my top 10. Suffice it to say, guys, it's a pretty damn powerful one. There's other apps that I enjoy uh, in virtual reality. Uh, I have some fun with Tilt Brush, Medium, some other ones, for example. Nothing comes close to Google Earth VR. Yes, the history and the geography and all of that is basically built in to Google Earth VR. The fact, though, that I have the entire planet at my fingertips. I can explore anywhere on the planet. I also learned a lot from you guys. My understanding was it was essentially satellite imagery and Google vans driving around. Based on what you guys are telling me, there are airplanes for places like New York and Hong Kong. Uh, you know, high altitude jets, for example, also taking footage responsible for some of those detailed locations. And details, guys, is what Google Earth VR just does amazingly well and in spades. And a feature that they added, Street View, kicks it up right to the next level. You have the ability not just to go down as far as satellite and plane imagery can take you, but you can get to that Google Street View level, check out stuff like the Coliseum or you know Dodger Stadium, for example, and then walk down the street that you're on. In fact, you could street view yourself between New York City and Boston, just as an example. Absolutely amazing. Next up, another Vive title, Carnage Chronicles. Now, at first glance, guys, it looks like half a dozen other fantasy action light RPG games. And it is one of those. Where it differs, though, is the effort the devs have put into this title. What I love about it is the voice acting. Listen to the narrator in this, and honestly, you want to hear more. It's not one of those annoying or horrible acting voices that you're just like, okay, turn this off, I've had enough. No, you want to hear the narrator go on. The artificial intelligence, for example, when I first played the title, I was amazed at simple stuff like ducking arrows. It doesn't sound like a complicated thing. It sounds like something other devs could have thrown in, but they didn't. Carnage Chronicles devs, they did. And it's an amazing feeling to line up a shot with an arrow, a sure as hell shot that you can't possibly miss, and then have the AI at the last second duck. And there's all kinds of cool little moments like that in the game. Again, another title, highly recommend. If you like Vanishing Realms, for example, this is like Vanishing Realms on steroids. Absolutely fantastic. Check out Carnage Chronicles. And then the next title, Fallout 4 Virtual Reality. It's playable on the Rift, but it was really kind of focused to be launched and played on the HTC Vive. Now, I've tried it on the Rift. I put out a video for the viewers that wanted to see a Rift version, and it works. Ultimately, it's not as streamlined or as functional as the Vive version, but don't let that put you off. You can still pick up the game, finish it, and get a lot of enjoyment on your Rift. I just happen to really enjoy the Vive experience for Fallout 4 VR. It's an RPG from Bethesda, which means, yeah, the main storyline probably measured in, you know, tens of hours, but 
go off the beaten path, play the vanilla game, and really explore and check out nooks and crannies. And guys, hundreds of hours of gameplay awaits you. Fallout 4 VR, hell of a lot of fun. Now this next title is essentially a tie, meaning whichever I happen to have configured is the headset that I'm gonna run with. Project Cars 2. I'm not a huge, and I know some of you guys uh, are way more into racing games and cockpit-based games than I am. I'm not that hardcore about it, but I do enjoy me some cockpit games. Elite Dangerous, which wasn't on this list because it was a 2016 game, but one that I still play a lot. Cockpit games for me have always delivered in the sense that what you do in game mirrors what you're doing outside of the game. In other words, you're sitting with a steering wheel. Well, in real life, you're sitting with a PC or PlayStation or whatever racing wheel. And that just ups the immersion like you wouldn't believe. Well, Project Cars adds a lot to the formula laid out by Project Cars 1. More tracks, more cars, better AI. In short, in my opinion, just a much better virtual reality experience. If you like cockpit racers, guys, you're in for a treat with Project Cars 2. And then the last title, guys, this might come as a bit of a surprise. And again, this isn't my favorite of the batch. It's just one of the 10. And it's also a tie, Vive and Rift. The title, Blasters of the Universe. Until Blasters of the Universe, the title for me that most felt like what an arcade shooter would be like in VR was Space Pirate Trainer, hands down. Blasters of the Universe is Space Pirates times a million. It's just, in my opinion, that much better. Uh, better AI, better variety of weapons, better variety of levels, better storyline, better graphics, better music, better sound effects. In short, better everything that you loved about Space Pirate Trainer. So. If you're in that similar position where you've played Space Pirate Trainer and you loved it, but you haven't got Blasters of the Universe, highly, highly recommend it. Well, guys, that's it for my top 10. Like I said, they're pretty much spread out all over the place, covering all three platforms in no specific order. But what I'd love to hear now is your top 10. So let me know in the comments below. I don't care what order, I don't care what platform, I just want to know what your top 10 was. Perhaps I'm going to find some gems in there for me to try out. Guys, as always, cheers.